Hey there, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. And I guess it's sort of a random video. I don't know if I'll do more of these, but uh, pretty much I'm looking through these boxes to see which movies are in which one because I forgot. I figure since I'm pulling them out just to check, why not show them to you guys? So in a way, it's a DVD Blu-ray collection video, but I guess I could call something like, what's in the box? I don't know. If people like this, maybe I'll do more in the future. But uh, in this box, what we have here for movies, <coughs> Source Code, underrated sci-fi film with Jake Gyllenhaal from the director of Moon, Duncan Jones. Very solid sci-fi film. Jake Gyllenhaal did a really good job. You also have Jeffrey Wright. Michelle Monaghan and Vera Farmiga. Again, underrated sci-fi film. Like to review this someday. And The Army Now. My favorite Pauly Shore film. There's a few Pauly Shore films I enjoy. Son in Law, Encino Man, but this is my favorite. I had a lot of fun with this movie. Definitely a film I want to rewatch pretty soon. That's In the Army Now. Holly Shore, Andy Dick, Lori Petty, David Allen Greer. We're the Water Boys. Sound of Thunder. This is a film that I can watch at the end of the day as a time waster, but it is a flawed film because it's not a finished film. This is directed by Peter Hyams. A lot of problems arose. I believe sets were destroyed or flooded. Seems like the making of this would be really interesting. Sally, this doesn't have any features except some trailers. But again, a documentary on this would be really intriguing. I know Ben Kingsley has some weird fucked up hair in this. The CGI is poor. I kind of gave it a little bit of leniency because again, it wasn't finished. It's an unfinished movie. That's what it seemed like. But I like the idea of people take a trip back in time things, something happens, butterfly effect happens, and when they come back to the present, these new creatures and dinosaurs and other things have evolved. So you get some interesting designs. I like Edward Burns in the lead. I would like to have seen this film finished. And I like Peter Himes as a director. He's one of my favorite directors. He did Outland, my favorite Sean Connery film. And the day is one of my favorite Schwarzenegger movies. The Relic, a favorite creature feature of mine. Time Cop, one of my favorite Van Damme films. So, I, again, it's a flawed film. It's not a film I would defend. It's not a film I would call underrated. But it's it's a interesting failure, if that makes sense. <clears throat> a film a lot of people hate, The Hulk from 2003. This is a film I've been sort of, there are movies throughout the years I've been up and down on. A Soldier with Kurt Russell, which I'm, like, I'm not sure about, but ultimately I do like the film. This is one of those, when I saw it in the theater, I'm like, interesting. Then when I saw it on home video, I'm like, eh, I don't know about this. But seeing this again, i rather enjoy it, watching it again. I wasn't always a fan of the film, but I appreciate what Ain Lee was trying to do. Uh, I think... The, the film has grown on me. I, I like the editing style. A lot of people don't. I like Eric Bana. I like that the director was trying to go for a bit of a deeper message. I appreciate that, considering the films that come out today. And this Hulk is more badass than Mark Ruffalo's Hulk. I'm sorry. That's my opinion. This Hulk is being the fuck out of tanks and helicopters and creatures. This Hulk could kick Mark Ruffalo's Hulk's ass right in his fucking Poindexter glasses. And then you have the best Hulk film, The Incredible Hulk with Edward Norton. This film should have gotten sequels. This film's a bit underrated. Of the MCU films called one of the worst and one of the least successful. Bullshit, my dick. This film beats the fuck out of Avengers Endgame. It beats the fuck out of Avengers Infinity War. 
and I'm not taking that back. I'll watch this ten times over those two pieces of shits. Yes, I said it, and I'm not taking it back. This is Edward Norton did a really good job with this. This and the Eric Bottom one I want to get on Blu-ray sometime. See it in HD. <clears throat> Isolation. I guess the best way to describe it is think of a standalone X-Files episode. This deals with his place on a farm, people are trapped. I'm not going to give too much away for those who haven't seen it, but again, my best way to describe this is like a standalone X-Files episode, which is a good thing. That even kind of reminds me of Mulder and Scully. In fact, if you took this film and that was X-Files, I want to believe that the sequel, which is a piece of shit, would have been a better movie. I mean, I, I think this is a good movie. I'm saying the first X-Files movie I liked. X-Files, I want to believe, I ranted on that piece of shit on the channel long ago. That's a piece of shit sequel. Highwaymen, I saw this in the theater back in the day, and it, I thought it was pretty decent. It's very short, a bit too short. Um, Frankie Faison from Sons of Lambs, he plays a badass detective. Jim Caviezel is the lead, his wife has been murdered. And he's on the hunt for the killer who drives his car. And he's kind of rigged up with all these metal... Kind of like people who are paralyzed or, you know, they have those rods and stuff set up. But he's set it up with his car, the, the killer, which is Colm Fiore. Kind of a... It's from the same director of the original Hitcher, Robert Harmon. This is kind of like a spiritual sequel to the Hitcher, in a way. It's a lot better than the Hitcher 2. <laughs> See, I'm allergic to that fucking movie with Jake Busey, but... Again, the film is a bit too short, and this cover is very lazy and plain, but I like this film, Highwaymen. No one really talks about that movie. <clears throat> Come Pow, Enter the Fist. This is, I think, a very fun comedy. I love the idea of taking an old kung fu film, redubbing it, filming some new footage, mixing with the old... Uh, I thought this, it was rather ingenious, and I thought it was pretty entertaining comedy. I would like to have seen a sequel to this. Sally, that never happened, because this film bombed when it came out. No one really talks about it, but entertaining movie. I quite enjoy it. I Am Legend. I like the film. The only issue is the poor CGI. There's no excuse for that. I would have been interested to see the Ridley Scott Schwarzenegger version of I Am Legend. Really would have wanted to see that instead of this. But as it is, I still like it. This is the two disc. The two disc is because it has the theatrical and it has the alternate cut. The alternate cut is the cut where Will Smith lives. And I thought it was a much better ending. In fact, I believe this part is from that ending because the creature... You think it's going to attack Will Smith, but it scares him because, like, you took my mate and experimented on her. The creature grabs its mate, leaves, and Will Smith is sort of there, like, oh my god, what did I do? But he doesn't die at the end. I don't think that cuts on Blu-ray, sad to say. If I'm wrong, please let me know, because I would love to pick it up. But, yeah, this has the original release and the alternate theatrical version. So... I, I believe the only way is this two disc. So yeah, there is a version where Will Smith lives, and that's the version I prefer. Plus, I thought it, it, it brought a bit more interesting ideas to the ending of like who is the real villain. It give you at least a little bit of food for thought, at least a tiny bit. Next up is Simone. Uh, this film got panned when it came out. Um, I mean, there were a couple of critics who liked it, including Larry King and Gene Shalit, but <clears throat> I thought this film was pretty decent. I like the idea, and I like Al Pacino. The idea is, what if this, uh, I forget if he's a producer or a director, I think a producer, I forget, but he creates an actress in the computer, and everyone thinks it's real. 
everyone thinks this person is real and has their acting in movies, but it's all a computer program. And he makes up ideas as to why she can't go out in the public. She's a very private person, all these other lies. So I, I could kind of see that happening with the way technology keeps going nowadays. I really can see this happening. So who knows, maybe this would be a film that uh, maybe a bit a little ahead of its time. But Simone, I don't think this is that bad of a film at all. I thought Al Pacino did a really good job. You also have Jay Moore. I always keep thinking this is the stop, the top. This is not Natasha Hintrus or Charlize Theron. I always keep thinking it's one of them, but it's not. But yeah, I think it's a little bit of an underrated film. <clears throat> the Invasion. This this is a film I picked up for cheap because I wanted to give another shot. Picked up a long, long time ago. And in retrospect, it's not the worst film ever. It's just kind of pointless. Because this is the fourth Body Snatchers film. To the point they don't even have Body Snatchers in the title anymore. And my favorite Body Snatchers film is the, the 90s one with Abel Ferrara, which I have on Blu-ray around here somewhere. <clears throat> but, I mean, watching again, it's not the worst film ever. I mean, at best, it's a time waster. Because I watch it again recently and it's again it's you got Nicole Kidman, Daniel Craig, Jeffrey Wright, cast didn't do that bad of a job it's just kinda like what was the point of it being made kinda one of those things and apparently it's got messed with in post-production I don't know all the details but again it's just kinda like why like what why did we need a fourth body stature so that's sort of the thought process on that <clears throat> next up is scary movie which i enjoy i thought the wayans brothers did a really nice job with this film i think what makes the, this in the sequel which i have over here to me these are the only good scary movie films the rest sucked ass and the Wayans Brothers had no hand in them, so that's why. The Wayans Brothers wanted to do a Scary Movie 3, but they got fucked over, and there are interviews on YouTube you can find from Wallen Wayans with how that whole sh sh thing happened. But these are the only good ones. I mean, in fact, I would say the sequel is my favorite. But uh, I still like this one. I think because one thing I noticed, they stick to one story. And yeah, they maybe like this one references a little bit of I Know We Did Last Summer, Blair Witch Project, a little bit of Matrix stuff. But films later, like disaster movie, superhero movie, they literally take like 15 movies and try to put them together. But these films try to be like one film. If, if you, I don't, maybe I'm not making sense, but. They actually kind of try to tell a story, even in a parody form, just like Airplane did, just like the Hot Shots movies did. They, they, they mainly stick to one movie they're parodying, like Airplane was Airport. Hot Shots Part Dia was Rambo, kind of Rambo 2, Rambo 3. Natural Lamp was Loaded Weapon 1, mainly Lethal Weapon. And that's, that's, I would say Loaded Weapon 1 and Hot Chest Part D are my two favorite parody films, but uh, these are a lot of fun. Yeah. It's too bad the Wayans Bros got fucked over. Steer Movie 3, 4, and 5 sucked, and Steer Movie 5 is one of the worst parody films. The worst parody is probably Movie 43, which I ranted on on the channel. <laughs> Skeleton Man, uh, the only reason I have this is because Michael Rooker, from Cliffhanger and Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer is the lead. And he's the hero of the film. And it's kind of his version of Predator, only it's this ancient spirit. It's low budget. I mean, I wouldn't call it a good movie, but I could watch it for Michael Rooker. And it was kind of fun to see him in this kind of film. This is probably a film that you would see on Sci-Fi Channel when Sci-Fi Channel was decent. Short film, too. It's under 90 minutes. 
but yeah, that's Gelatin Man. <clears throat> Hancock, underrated film. This film doesn't get talked about anymore, and when it does, people talk about that it was a failure, or it, it sucked. I disagree. I thought this was a, a damn good superhero comedy, you know, superhero comedy. Will Smith, I thought, did a wonderful job. I forgot Jason Bateman was in this, which is cool. I definitely want to watch this again. Peter Berg directed it. He did a good job. I forgot it had this thing, which I don't know what the point of this is, but whatever. <clears throat> but it does have quite a few features. I forgot there was an unrated cut. I don't know what the difference is. Sad to say, it doesn't look like there's a commentary on it. But uh, Hancock, I enjoyed. I actually would have been curious to see a sequel to this, but that never came to be. I don't know, maybe the film didn't do that well in the box office. <clears throat> Next up is a criminally underrated film, Suspect Zero. I tried to explain this on a stream, and someone said, Is it like The Cell? No, it's not like The Cell, which I love. I reviewed that on the channel. That's probably Jennifer Lopez's best film, in my opinion. This is more... It's a thriller. Pretty much Ben Kingsley. He's a character who's in this program where they telepathically get into the minds of killers. And you're not sure if he's a good guy or a bad guy, but you realize he's hunting this criminal called Suspect Zero, who's responsible... Who's like the ultimate serial killer. And Aaron Eckhart, he's the FBI agent on the job. And he's partnered up with Terry Ann Moss. And I thought it was an interesting story. I thought the cast worked very well together. I especially like Aaron Eckhart in the film. Sally's this film does not have a Blu-ray because of this piece of shit company, Parapricks, Pricks, Paramount, are the worst company ever when it comes to Blu-rays. I like the idea of remote viewing. I don't remember that being used in too many movies, at least at the top of my head. And again, Aaron Eckhart, I thought did a good job. Carrie Ann Moss, nice to see her in a film other than the Matrix movies. But Suspect Zero, underrated film. Sphere, interesting film. I do like it, but it's not everyone's cup of tea. I can see a lot of people finding this film to be boring, and I can't blame them. It's a bit over long. It's over two hours. The marketing lied. This, the marketing made it seem like it's a horror film, that it's a creature feature film, and it's not in the slightest. This film is more akin to, I don't want to say 2001, but it, it's more a thriller, sci-fi, drama more psychological because they find this fear and they realize it's their fears being formed into a, a physical manifestation. The reason I like this is the cast, especially Dustin Hoffman. And I thought the production values, the score, the sets, the effects, I thought were pretty damn good. They definitely had a budget behind this. So uh, the, the look, the production, the cast are the and I thought the story, a lot of times I like when it's a psychological that deals with the fears of people come to life, like As Above, So Below, or Event Horizon. You know, that's always an intriguing idea for me. So this is not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but I do like it. Speaking of not everyone's cup of tea, Speed Racer. I like the film. I never saw the source material, but I thought this was colorful, energetic, fast-paced, despite the running time. Matthew Fox, I liked him in the movie. You also have John Goodman, Christina Ricci. But yeah, I, yeah, I thought it was energetic and zippy and very colorful. And it's from the Wachowskis. I would say it's their second best film after the Matrix films, in my opinion. But I like Speed Racer. Go Speed Racer, go. When I did a stream in 19, for 1999 films, this guy brought up a lot, and that was cool. Idle Hands. Underrated comedy. 
Imagine the scene in Evil Dead 2 with Bruce Campbell's hand being alive, but that's an entire film. Devin Sawa, I thought, did a really solid job with this role as a slacker who's so lazy his hand gets possessed because idle hands are the devil's playpen. And so his hand comes alive and starts killing people. And some of the people who die become zombies like Seth Green and I forgot this other guy. Which, yeah, that reminds me of American Wolf in London, but I thought it was done better here than Tom Cruise's Mummy movie. I thought it was funny, it was entertaining, it was pretty fast-paced, had some nice moments of blood and gore. Funny idea, sick, twisted sense of humor, and I thought the cast did a good job. Devin Sawa, Seth Green, VVK Fox. Yes, even Jessica Alba. I thought she did fine in the role she had. So, Idle Hands, an underrated film. Definitely want to review that sometime. <clears throat> Next up is The Herd Locker. Great war film directed by Catherine Bigelow, uh, Jeremy Renner, and Anthony Mackie. Funny enough, two people who would be in the Avengers movies. They're the stars of the film. You also have... Guy Pierce, who was in Iron Man 3, Ray Fiennes, David Morse. This is a film I haven't seen in forever, probably since when it came out. What was it, 2008 or 2010? I want to say 2008. But yeah, I, I remember liking this film very thoroughly. I thought Jeremy Renner did a wonderful job with this. The Herd Locker. And this is a film no one ever talks about anymore, come to think about it. At the time, people were praising it, but now no one ever mentions the Herd Locker, which I find strange. I showed this recently. I had put it over here, but I, I haven't watched this yet. But Chains of Gold, John Travolta film, made for cable. I think I said Showtime, but I think someone mentioned it was for HBO. But, uh, yeah, I like John Travolta. Curious to give this a look. Chains of Gold. <coughs> a film I rewatch and still enjoy, Night and Day. This is a film that when it came out with a box office flop, I had critics didn't care for it. I, I disagree. I thought this was very entertaining. I thought Tom Cruise and Cameron Diaz worked well together. Tom Cruise had a great charm to his character. I thought he had some pretty entertaining action scenes. He had a very fast pace. Yeah, I really don't understand the the crap this film got. Definitely one of Tom Cruise's more underrated films, in my opinion, Night and Day. And from James Mangold, who would go on to do Logan and Copland, which I think Copland is his best film. But yeah, Night and Day. Bit of an underrated film, in my opinion. <clears throat> Next up is Van Helsing. This is a film I've wanted to like. And I think in the past I kind of wanted to push myself to like it. Because I like the idea of a big budget monster movie with Dracula, the Frankenstein monster, werewolves. I like Hugh Jackman in the role. There's a couple of nice moments of action but I do say moments but this film sucks I tried to watch it again I got through it but it sucks I know my friend Michael King Phantasm likes it and that's cool the CGI is piss poor there's no reason for it it should have been practical effects the werewolves are some of the worst looking CG werewolves in a big budget film I've ever seen Dracula looks fake He's, he's the worst fucking Dracula I've ever seen in a motion picture. This Dracula must be wearing pink. The Frankenstein monster, I swear he's trying to do a Peter Boyle from Young Frankenstein impression. Which works for that movie because it's a comedy. Here you're supposed to be taking the... Seriously, but this... Frankenstein does, the Frankenstein monster does seem like he's doing, trying to be Peter Boyle from Young Frankenstein. The, the, the finale is really boring. I don't care about... Half the shit that went on in the finale, 
CGI crappy looking werewolf Van Helsing versus crappy looking Dracula. This this fade Dracula, what the fuck? I mean, I thought the Dracula Blade, Blade Trinity was bad, but this is the worst Dracula in a movie, especially a big budget film. And the action scenes are hampered by bad CGI. It's too long. It's well over two hours. Two hours and twelve minutes. The score is pretty decent by Elsa Vestry. Hugh Jabman does a good job, but even the beginning where he fights Dr. No, Mr. Hyde, the Lady of Extraordinary Gentleman came out around the same time, and that Hyde looked better than the Hyde in this movie. So, I could see why this film didn't do well, and it's... Hugh Jabman, I like his character, I liked his weapon, like this automatic bow, deserved a better movie. I think it should have been a better director. Steven Summers did great with Deep Rising and the first Mummy. That's pretty much it with Steven Summers. It should have been like, I don't know, Remy Harlan or maybe John McTiernan take a chance on it. Or, I hate to say it, I know Michael Bay was approached for this. At that time, I would have rather seen him do it than Steven Summers. I hate to say it. <coughs> South Park the movie, This I like this more than the show. I'm not a big musical guy. I'm not a big South Park guy. Again, I don't care for the show, but I thought the movie had some catchy songs, some laugh-aloud moments, and was very entertaining. Maybe... I, in my opinion, I guess they should have just stuck with movies instead of the show. I know people disagree with that. <clears throat> this is the animated 90s Spider-Man cartoon. A very nice person sent this to me. I don't even know if that person watches my stuff anymore. But, uh, what, sad to say, when I first got this, the disc, the first disc didn't work. I had to tell him about it. Hopefully he didn't take it the wrong way. Like, I was unappreciative. I really was. I just wanted him to let him know that the first disc didn't work. Because if he bought this, or he got this from someone, it's like, hey, that, that person gave you a bad bit of goods. But I, I did get another copy, thanks to him, so I do appreciate that. Hopefully, again, hopefully he didn't take it the wrong way. But I really enjoyed this set. I don't know why this cartoon is not officially released. I mean, Batman the anime series got a release. Why not Spider-Man? This is a 90s cartoon that many people love and enjoy. And you just say this is the best Spider-Man release thing in the past 20 years, if you think about it. This is better than the movies. And I love the artwork on this. It's really cool artwork. So, this is a really wonderful gift. <clears throat> Next up, we have the Hills of Eyes remake. I do have this on Blu-ray somewhere, but this is one of my favorite remakes. What I used to have before I started shaving my hair off. I had a bit longer hair. I kind of looked like this guy, character Doug, to the point my friends would keep start calling me Doug. <laughs> but uh, I love this movie. I think it's much better than the original, mainly for the third act, where it becomes a Sergio Leone hardcore action horror western revenge movie and even the music sounded like Sergio Leone and your Morricone type of music <clears throat> I love the gore I love the director by Alexander Aja I did look forward to his new film Crawl I thought that looked pretty cool so I thought this remake did a great job I do have the sequel somewhere I don't know where though might be one of the other boxes. <clears throat> this is the original. I have it because for the West Craven collection. And this also has disc two, the directors, the films of West Craven, which is about an hour long. I forgot what company, I mean what channel released it. But I believe it was on TV first, the directors. And then they released some DVDs. But it's a bonus feature on the bonus disc, which is nice. And you have interviews with Courtney Cox, David Arquette, Adrian Barbeau, Nev Campbell, Bill Pullman, Meryl Streep, Robert England. So that was really nice. Sad to say I'm not a fan of the movie. 
I love Wes Craven. May you rest in peace. Shocker is my favorite of his. I love the Serpent and the Rainbow. I love the people under the stairs. I've reviewed those on the channel. I never reviewed this because I'm not a fan of this movie. I actually prefer the remake over this. I this film I found boring, and the only noteworthy thing was this guy here, Michael Berryman. But in my opinion, the remake is better, but that's just my opinion. <clears throat> then we have Short Circuit. This is the Blu-ray that has the old features on it. Love Short Circuit ever since I was a kid. And the very underrated sequel, Short Circuit 2. This sequel deserves a lot more love than it's gotten. And in fact, funny enough, I actually have <coughs> this. Now, if you're wondering what this is, back in the day at the mom and pop VHS stores or gas stations, ga yes, for those who don't know, gas stations would actually have VHS tapes to rent. And this would be on the wall with a little hanger. If you want the movie, you look at it, you take it off, you can read the back, you slap it down. Hey, I want to rent this movie. They get this number to find it, and then they give you the VHS tape to rent. And I think I got this because I think long, long ago, like they were selling VHS tapes, and then this was in there, and unless I stole it, and I don't remember doing it <laughs> when I was a kid, but. This is a nice memento to have. But I love the Johnny Five character. I know at one point they wanted to remake the film. You don't need to remake it. Give better special editions of these. How about that? But hey, what do I know? I know that's such a crazy idea. It's batshit insane, man. Really? Do that? We can't do that. Cuffs, underrated film. I know this got a Blu-ray recently. I do want to pick up some time. I don't think it has much features. Sad to say, Christian Slater's not interviewed, which sucks. But uh, I love this film. Incredibly underrated. This makes me s realize that if you did Deadpool in the 90s, he'd be the perfect Deadpool. Because this character, not action-wise, but behavior he does remind me of Deadpool the way he breaks the fourth wall talks to the camera uh, the way he handles situations is even the movie itself does break the fourth wall from time to time like there's a moment where he's talking with this guy who is Tony Dolan from Ghost and Tony Dolan keeps talking and cursing every time he curses it, it bleeps out until the end where he finally is like Fuck you. <laughs> There's a lot of very uh, laugh out loud funny moments in this movie. And I know Mila Jovovich is on the cover, but she's in the film for like five minutes. So that's weird. And yeah, the Harold Foltemeyer did the score. Very underrated movie, Cuffs. Definitely recommend that film if you've never seen it. If you like action and comedy. <clears throat> This is a film I haven't seen in a while, so I want to rewatch this again before I form an opinion. I think I've gotten this DVD because I heard so many good things about it. But Kung Fu Hustle. Soldier. Like I said, this is a film I was off and on throughout the years, but ultimately watched it months ago. Really enjoyed the film. I like the basic, straightforward story. You know, this guy who was raised to be a killing machine, a soldier, left behind like garbage with the few words he has. Kurt Russell did a really good job acting wise. And granted, I would like to see a bit more action, but I'm an action junkie. Uh, what's there? There's some pretty good crowd pleasing moments in Soldier. Like, this is a film despite the CG, that does feel like an 80s throwback. Unlike some of these films that tout it. At least that's, you know. <clears throat> this is how I feel. Signs, I would say this is the last decent M. Night Shyamalan movie. 
It's flawed, the ending where why the fuck would the aliens land on a place where there's so much water and it's like acid. I know, I don't get it either. But I like the musical score, I like Bill Gibson's performance, I like some of the build-up and suspense of the film. I thought the kids, especially the little girl, they were charming and not annoying at all. And overall, I like the idea of using the crop, the, uh, why am I blank on that? Crop signals, the crop, crop circles. I don't know why my brain farted for that, but just not many movies deal with crop circles. And I like, I like that idea of utilizing that in the movie. This is a film I got back in the day because I'm a big Sound Hill fan of the video games. In fact, Sound Hill 2 is my favorite video game of all time. This film has some beautiful visuals. It's cool they use the music from the game, but the story, the pacing, the dialogue, yes, even for a video game movie, I think the dialogue in the game was better than this. At the acting, Oh, but the, then you know what? In a movie, you should do better. But the acting, especially from some of the supporting characters, and it, it seems like the people who made this, they got the visuals of the game, but they didn't understand what Silent Hill is. If they did, they knew not to put this motherfucker in the game in the movie. Because Pyramid Head, if you've never played Silent Hill 2, is the manifestation of the guilt that the lead character has because he murdered his wife but he did it because she was sick and dying but also she kept humiliating him and yelling at him and cursing him out and it warped his brain so in a way he was putting her out of her misery but there's a, there was also a bit of finally so he wasn't like an all-out bad guy but there's a certain there's a darkness and guilt to it that was a manifestation of it. But the movie, they don't give a shit about that subtext. I think the filmmakers don't know the games had subtext. So that's why... And why the Silent Hill, one of the great game, things of the game is you're by yourself in the middle of nowhere. The isolation. But in the town, there's like 50 fucking people. So again, they, they fucked that up. Good visuals and music, but everything else sucked. So that's what pisses me off about that movie. <clears throat> um, I actually forgot I had this. Got it for cheap because it was beaten up. But Saw 1 through 5. I don't have 6 or 7 or the new one. Don't care. I think I got this again because it was cheap. But I thought oh, maybe one day I'll re-review the Saw films. Not anytime soon. I mean I ranked it on the... Fucking jigsaw. And then I have this one. Because really is the only one I like. Saw 2, I can watch as a time waster. But this has a very fun commentary with this guy, Carrie Ellis, who's really funny on the commentary. And I don't remember if it was on this. Maybe it is. It could be. But I know it's on this one. This two disc special edition, the uncut edition. And it says it has two feature link commentaries. One of them is for Terry Ellis, and again, he's a lot of fun on it. And then the Saw movies, which, in my opinion, did not need to be a franchise. <clears throat> Next up is the Street Fighter Collection. I know this is a cheap Street Factory, Shell Factory. They came out with a Blu ray collection of these movies. I like to pick that up one day to see. How cleaned up they are but for now I have this which is on that it's Street Fighter Return to Street Fighter Street Fighter's Last Revenge Sister Street Fighter and a special bonus film Viva Chiba the Bodyguard so. I do remember the first Street Fighter being the best one love the music <laughs> Call the Conqueror, this is a film that I like Kevin Sorbo, but it always made me go, 
Why the fuck didn't you just do a Hercules movie? Why did you do a wannabe PG-13 Conan film? I think it was supposed to be Conan or Conan's dad or something like that, but then they couldn't get the rights. But uh, again, this maybe go either make it R-rated and go all the way, or just make it a fucking Hercules movie. So I do like Kevin Sorbo, but the movie, eh. knowing well-directed film, the kids did a good job. Definitely a surprising ending. <laughs> If you've seen the movie, you know what I mean by surprise and ending. Kind of ballsy. Good by Alex Proyas, who did The Crow and I, Robot. Definitely an interesting sci-fi film. I'll say that. I don't think it's a badly made film. Crawl. I believe I have this film on Blu-ray. I believe so. I don't. I don't remember anymore. But, I do like this film. I wish the glaive was used a lot more. It's barely used and it's such a cool weapon. But I love the score by James Horner. I like the fantasy elements. I think I saw this film more when I was a kid than Star Wars, to be honest. But I love the slayers. These creatures. The sound effects they made when they die. The Beast, and I love his fortress. I thought there was some really imaginative designs. I like that the fortress, like every midnight or something, it disappeared and went to another place. But, uh, yeah, I, I do like Crawl quite a bit. <laughs> RSVP. I uh, got this back in the day because it stars Jason Mewes. This is one of the few roles at the time that he got that wasn't a Kevin Smith movie. And he's not the lead, but he's one of the supporting characters. And the film is about a person who is studying serial killers and wants to have the perfect mass murder at this party. So he's trying to be a little bit like that Alfred Hitchcock film, Rope. Not so much being shot in one take, but the, the story. And it also has Glenn Quinn, who is on the TV show Roseanne, who sadly passed away. But I remember not minding the film. And yeah, it was cool to see Jason Mewes in a film that wasn't a Kevin Smith movie. I know I did not pay $7.95 for it. Rubber. <clears throat> I think someone was actually asking me about this on a stream. And I knew I had the film. I enjoy it. It's unique, it's original, it's bizarre, it's batshit, and I love the originality of a killer tire. And it's so quirky and out there and strange that uh, I appreciate it. I do appreciate it. I thought it was quite a bit of fun. <laughs> oh, I like the... Yeah, she has a little... <clears throat> Sorry about that, folks. Streamers, Peter Weller film, I quite enjoy. I think it's one of Peter Weller's better films. Cool, this has a Blu-ray to see in widescreen and HD quality. It has a couple of interviews with the director, the producer, also with uh, Jennifer Rubin. I don't know why Peter Weller doesn't do interviews. He's being a fucking dickhead. A pretentious prick, in my opinion. We also have this cover here, which I remember from back in the day. Streamers. Really good sci-fi horror film. The sequel sucked ass. Semi-tough. I've seen this film, but I don't remember much about it because I only saw it once. But I'm glad to have it for the Burt Reynolds collection. May you rest in peace. You also have Chris Christopherson. I believe Brian Dennehy is in this film. I could be wrong. But, uh, yeah, semi-tough. Cool to see Burt and Chris Christopherson in the same movie. 
Senseless is a film I wanted to like, because I like these two guys, Marlon Wayans and David Spade. And it's from the director of Wayne's World and Black Sheep. But you also have Brad Dourif in the movie, Matthew Lillard. But with all that talent, it just... This is a pretty forgettable, unfunny movie, in my opinion. Pretty much, this guy, he needs money. He goes, takes this experiment from the doctor, played by Brad Dourif. And it's supposed to heighten his senses, but then he takes too much, so one of his senses is gone from time to time while the others are working, so at times you can't see, at times you can't hear. Could be a good idea, but I don't know, the, the script just wasn't that funny. I mean, it's not like the worst thing ever. I mean, you can kind of watch his background noise. You know how you have movies that it's not good, but you can watch it while you're doing something that's harmless? This is one of those movies. This is a lot of movies like that. It's hard to review because, like, it didn't make me mad, but it's, uh, I don't think it's good either. But again, if you just want background noise, you can put it on. <coughs> Ronan. Uh, solid John Frankenheimer movie. Not my favorite Frankenheimer film. That'd be Dead Bane, but... Some really solid action set pieces. Robert De Niro does a great job in this film, as does John Renault. Ronan, good flip. The item, strange movie, false advertising by the cover. The cover makes it seem like a creature feature horror film, like the creature's going to escape and kill people. Not the case. The, the creature is more this worm, like this cute puppet-looking worm that has no eyes. And... It manipulates people and kind of looks into their minds, their fears, their desires. There's this one scene where the worm puppet fucks an Asian lady consensually by She Wants It, the tale of the worm. Yes, there's a uh, worm puppet sex scene where it has sex with an Asian lady and she likes it. And that's like the <laughs> near the end of the film. That's pretty much the ending of the film. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> I don't know how to describe it other than that. Shit. Then we have Romancing the Stone, which is a good movie, and Jewel of the Nile, which is a step down of a sequel. Could see, uh, I thought the first film had features, but I guess the sequel has features. Okay, the sequel says special edition, but this first one is a bare bones. Well, that's lame. Why the fuck did they do that? It's, I think I know the film's on Blu-ray. I do have this film on Blu-ray. I reviewed this film on the channel. Love this movie. It's a classic. One more can be said. Scorpion King have this for the Dwayne Johnson collection. Wanted to give this another look because I like Chuck Russell, the director. He did the Blob from 1988. He did Eraser, Number No Street Part Three. All films I love, but this film. I think it's one of the director's weakest movies, and one of The Rock's weakest movies. And plus, you know what happens to Scorpion King. He loses, he sells his soul, and so you know what happens to him, so the fuck does it matter? You know what I mean? Hideaway, this is from the director of Virtuosity and Lawnmower Man. I love Virtuosity, I've reviewed that on the channel. I like Lawnmower Man, I've reviewed that on the channel. Uh, both better than this, but this is definitely better than Brett Leonard's Highlander The Source, which, that's horrible. I ranted on that when I did my reviews of the Highlander movies. This one's in the middle. Not bad, not good. It's there. Jeff Goldblum does a good job. Some special effects that don't hold up the best. Kind of interesting ideas. It's from a novel by Dean Koontz. Although I prefer Dean Koontz's Watchers, the movie, over this. But uh, I can watch this. I can watch it as a time waster. And yes, that is Alicia Silverstone. <clears throat> the 
Rogue, really good crocodile movie. Um, yeah, if you like crocodile movies, this is definitely worth a look. You have Rada Mitchell, Sam Worthington. Underrated film. Not many people talk about it, but yes, it's from the director Wolf Creek, and I think this is much better than Wolf Creek. I got this because my mom gave it to me. My mom knows I like action movies, so she thought I would like this. I don't, though. I ranted on this long ago. I still don't like this film. It's a shitty remake of Pitch Black, really. I know it's a sequel, but all they did was try to remake Pitch Black, and they do the do a bad job of it. Plus, I swear, Riddick disappears for like 40 minutes of the film. There's a part of the film he disappears, you see him like blinking, you miss it, for like 40 fucking minutes. Instead of these boring ass mercenaries I don't give a shit about. I thought that was a really stupid idea. So. I didn't throw it away because it's a gift from my mom. Ricochet. Good flick by the guy who did Highlander, Russell Mulcahy. Denzel Washington, John Lithgow, Ice T. I remember the song at the end. I think it's Ice T did it. Suicide, it's a suicide. Su suicide, it's a suicide. But good flick. Ricochet. The Hitcher, the original, the classic, awesome movie. Love this film to death. Deserves a Blu ray. I think there's a Blu ray overseas. I've heard good things, I've heard bad things. I would like to pick it up one day, hopefully one day down the road I'll get it. Uh, it's from Germany, I believe, but as, as for now, I'll stick with this. But I love this film to death, and this is an overseas. You do need a region-free player to play this, and it does have features. But uh, this deserves a Blu-ray in the U.S. If I made a list of Blu-ray films that need Blu-ray, that's in the top ten at least. I reviewed this on the channel. Someone sent this to me long ago. Good flick, Gary Busey's Hider in the House. Where he's living in a such in the house that his family moves into. Kind of a creepy idea. You have Mimi Rogers, Michael McKeon. But Gary Busey does a good job in the role. I have this on Blu-ray. It's an overseas Blu-ray. I just have the DVD just because, but... House of Haunted Hill, remake I quite enjoy. I believe I reviewed this on the channel. I could be wrong, though. But I quite enjoy it. I like Jeffrey Rush's character. I love the design of the house. I love the a lot of creepy aspects. The ending, you get some really bad CGI. But other than that, I do enjoy the film. I like the cast. Let's see... Duncan Johnson, Tay Diggs, I like Tay Diggs in the film, Bougie Wilson, Chris Kattan. Chris Kattan was actually pretty good in this. I, I think it's probably Chris Kattan's best move, best role in a movie, to be honest. But yeah, I much better than The Haunting, which came out the same year, 1999. <clears throat> you have Ip Man and Ip Man 2. The one he did with... Uh, Mike Tyson I didn't care for, but these two I enjoy. I believe I reviewed these on the channel, but they're both really good martial arts films with some outstanding fight sequences. Donnie Yen does a great job in these. <coughs> uh, I enjoy this show. It debuted on MTV Wild Boys. With Steve-O and Chris Pontius from Jackass. This is pretty much them going around the, the world. Different animals. Different crazy situations they get themselves into. Crazy dares. Uh, but yeah, Wild Boys Season 1. Season 2. And season three and four. And no, I don't remember paying $23.99 for this. But uh, I enjoy these quite a bit. I enjoyed Jackass. I like Steve-O quite a bit. I'm glad he got himself cleaned up and his life turned around. 
you looked up like his pop, his interview with Joe, Joe Rogan on YouTube. Really fascinating stories that he did with Joe Rogan, Steve Rogan. Yeah. Also, he was on this thing called Hot Ones. Really good episode. But these are a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, that's the first, the only four. I should say the only four seasons of Wild Boys. <coughs> This is an interesting documentary on sci-fi movies, To the Galaxy and Beyond, hosted by Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill narrates, pretty much just looking through sci-fi from the beginning all the way up to Independence Day, I believe. Independence Day was the newest one. But they talk about sci-fi films back in the day, the day the, day the Earth stood still, Star Wars, Alien, Aliens. I mean, it's not the most in-depth. It's only 97 minutes long. But it was cool to see. Plus, I had a trailer gallery. Pretty cool trailer gallery. Because when I... It said press play for all. And I went through multiple trailers to the first Alien. Like the original teaser. And the two trailers. Then the multiple, like three trailers for Aliens, uh, trailer for Predator, I think multiple trailers for Independence Day. So it's cool they didn't just have one trailer, they had multiple versions of some of the trailers. Multiple trailers to Planet of the Apes, the first one, so it was kind of a cool trailer gallery. And yeah, it was cool to have Mark Hamill narrate this stuff. As I am a Mark Hamill fan, Hope he does a good job as the voice of Chucky. But we'll see. <clears throat> Johnny Bravo. I only have season one. Maybe one day I'll pick up the other seasons. But I grabbed this about a month or so ago. Enjoyed it. Actually, I think this someone sent this to me as a gift. Now that I think about it. No, this was a gift someone sent to me. Because it was on my Amazon wish list. Which I appreciate. And uh, really enjoyed watching this again. It was a fun show to rewatch. Hopefully one day I'll get the other seasons. Yeah, fun show. <clears throat> I do have the first one on Blu-ray. It's over there. We have Jaws 2. Enjoyable sequel. Jaws 3, which I do like. And Jaws 4, which is a piece of shit. Wrongfully Accused. Not good, but I I don't hate it. There's some fun moments, like when the train actually is alive and is sneaking around corners of the forest looking for Leslie Nielsen. There's moments like that that made me chuckle. Uh, mainly it's a parody of The Fugitive with a few other aspects, like Mission Impossible, among others. I mean, it's not a good movie, but I, do, I could watch it for Leslie Nielsen. I mean, not as good as Airplane or the Naked Gun films, but there's a few Leslie Nielsen films that I need to get. Like, I don't have Spy Hard. What else? I think you have the Naked Gun films somewhere around here. I know I have Airplane. Dracula Dead and Loving It, I believe I do have. Might be over there, but this is, uh, it's there. You know, I, I, I got some chuckles out of it, so better than Disaster Movie or Epic Movie or Movie 43. Hulk vs., which is versus Thor and Wolverine. Wolverine is definitely the better one. Yeah, you have an appearance by Deadpool on that. So. The F Thor one is alright, but the, the Wolverine one is definitely the better of the two. Wish they did more of this stuff. I don't know why Marvel Animation doesn't do more stuff like this. <coughs> Jelly Triple Feature, Fist of Legend, The Enforcer, and Tai Chi Master. All three have commentaries with Bay Logan, which is cool. Of those three, Fist of Legend is the best one. But my favorite Jelly film is Kiss of the Dragon, which I reviewed on the channel when I did my... Uh, mini-marathon of Jet Li films where I reviewed a lot of his American movies. 
And Kiss of the Dragon is my favorite all-time Jet Li film. I love Kiss of the Dragon. I have a review of that on the channel, if you're interested. <clears throat> Scanner Cop, my favorite Scanner film. Uh, I think it's the best one. Sally, I don't think this has a Blu-ray release. I like the lead guy, and it was cool to see a Scanner Cop. I mean, it was a cool idea. Some really fun special effects. And head explosions. <clears throat> Next up is Sexy Beast. This is a film that was sent to me long ago. I'm showing this because I thought it kind of an interesting D thing to have on the disc. But I enjoy it. I thought it was pretty good acting performance by Ben Kingsley and Ray Winstone. And that's really the main reason to see the film. Screwed, eh, yeah. not as good as Dirty Work with Norm MacDonald. It was cool to see these three people in the film. Uh, probably a time waster at best. I, I don't love the film. It's, I think it should have been a lot funnier, but it, it was cool to see these guys in a film together. Screwed. Yeah, Reanimator, which is a good film. I have the sequels over there. This is definitely the best of the Reanimator movies. This is the Anchor Bay Special Edition. Repo Man, once again, solid flick. Really quirky and weird and strange and, dare I say, original Repo Man. Requiem for a Dream, I reviewed this long ago. Wonderful take on drug addiction. It really... If you want a movie to scare you off of drugs, this film will do it. I love the visual style that Darren Aronofsky brought to it. Wonderful directing job in this film. And the cast, including Marlon Wayans, did great in the dramatic uh, department. Ellen Burstyn especially did a solid job with this. <clears throat> Revenge, have this for the Tony Scott collection. One to like it, did not. I don't even know where the revenge comes into place. There is no revenge. I mean, she dies at the end, and him and Anthony Quinn kind of say, okay, goodbye, and they leave each other. And I thought this was a boring lane film. I know Tarantino loves the film. I don't agree with him on that. Tarantino also loved The Lone Ranger, so just because he loves something doesn't mean it's automatically whatever. It's like everyone else. They have different opinions and tastes. Tarantino loved The Lone Ranger? Yeah. Look up the year it came out and top in like top 10 Tarantino whatever year Lone Ranger came out. It was on the list. Resurrection uh, inspired by the movie Seven. One of Russell Mulcahy's best films and one of her Christopher Lambert's best films. Dark, creepy, crazy idea of a killer killing people, stealing their body parts because he wants to recreate the body of Jesus Christ. So, yeah, very dark idea. Um, I had the first one around here. Where did it go? Hmm. I do have the first one of this around here somewhere. I'm sure it'll pop up, but this is the third one, sometimes they come back for more. Yes, sometimes they come back, got three movies, and this is the third one. And I liked it for what it is. A little bit inspired by the theme, a little bit, but with some demons instead of aliens. I like Clayton Rohner, he's the lead actor in the film. He was in the Rejoy for Fool's Day, this TV show called Good vs. Evil. And for a direct -to video film, I've seen much worse. I liked it overall, I thought it was okay. Again, I have the first two somewhere. I don't know where, though. I know they're here somewhere. I kind of want to find it, because I want to keep them together. Where the fuck did it go? Sandwich. 
Oh well. I'll find it sooner or later. Hellcab, very deceiving cover. This makes it look like it'd be Christine with a taxi cab or about a serial killer that drives taxis. Not in the least. It's just the day in the life of a taxi driver. And he's not even a bad guy or crazy. It's just a guy dealing with these crazy, weird passengers throughout one day. I don't know why it's called Hell Cab. I don't know why it has this cover. Well, I know why it does. It made me want to see it, but it was a fucking lie. This is not a horror film at all. There's nothing creepy. Do you dare pay the fare? Why? There's nothing going on. There's no horror. It's it's not. It's just a day in the life of a cab driver. It's a drama. It's one of the worst pieces of false advertising I've seen on a DVD. Kill His Heroes. I do like this film, but it's way over long, way too long. But I thought the cast worked well together. Donald Sutherland was a hoot. Very fun character. But this is a Clint Eastwood film I do enjoy. Kelly's Heroes. <clears throat> High School High, a parody I had fun with. I'm not a big John Lovitz fan, but I did think he did a good job with this. You also have Tia Pereira, Mackay Pfeiffer. I didn't realize, holy shit, Hart Bachner directed this. Alice from Die Hard. Bubby, Hans Bubby, I'm your white knight. That guy directed this movie. I did not know that. Wow. But of course, I mean, this is a parody on Dangerous Minds and those games in high school type of movies. But I remember having fun with this one. I didn't realize that guy directed the movie. The Hidden, I don't know if this film's on Blu-ray. If not, it should be. But uh, this is on a disc with The Hidden 2, which The Hidden 2 is a piece of shit. But the first Hidden is great. Held up. Jamie Foxx film that no one remembers. But I had some fun with this film. I thought Jamie Foxx did a good job with the role. Pretty much, he's with his woman. She dumps him in the middle of nowhere at this gas station. And he's just trying to figure out uh, what to do next. His car is jacked by a teenager. He's taken hostage in a stick-up. Just one thing after the other after the other happening. But yeah, Jamie Foxx film that not many people have probably seen, but I thought this was a pretty decent flick. Might have caught it on cable back in the day. I think that's how I first saw it. Starship Troopers, I like the film for the action and special effects and the score. The thing about the film, which I know is the whole point of it, is that they're the Gestapo. I mean, it's it's Nazis. It's Gestapo. I mean, Neil Patrick Harris blatantly is playing that. And I, yeah, I know that's the point, because it's about how these people are brainwashed to be killers, and they follow the propaganda. I know that's the point of the film, but... I, I guess, in, it's sad to say, I kind of wish this was dumbed down as just a straightforward action, good guys fighting killer bugs. But, I, yeah, I, I know that's the point of the film, but that's the problem I have with the film. I like the film, but I don't love it because of that. Again, I know that defeats the purpose of the movie, but that's just my take on it. I enjoy it at face value as an action special effects movie. But the, the subtext I'm I don't care for. Solman, Bernie Mac, one of his last films. I thought he did a good job with Sam Jackson. They're doing a tribute concert, they're traveling across the country, settling their twenty five year old grudge along the way. I thought these two worked well together. It's R-rated. They don't hold back on the the cursing. And I do think the film's worth a watch for these two guys and how they play off each other. At least that's my opinion on it. 
I know I've seen these, but I don't remember anything about them. Sonny Chiba's Dragon Princess and Claudia Warriors. I had gotten this because Sonny Chiba. But, again, I know I've seen these, but I don't remember a damn thing about them. Species, the only good one of the franchise. I reviewed all of the Species films, and this is the only one worth a shit. Love the design. Love the H.R. Giger work. The special effects. I like the cast quite a bit, especially Michael Badson. Force Waker was good. The sequel sucked, and 3 and 4 sucked even more. Again, I reviewed all the Species films on the channel. For those interested. Sorry about that. Star Chamber. This is another film I think I reviewed on the channel. I could be wrong, but they have an underrated Peter Hyland's film. It's misleading. Michael Douglas does not have a gun in the movie, but it's more about a secret society of judges meeting together. And if they think a criminal slipped through the cracks, they become judge, jury, and executioner. And Michael Douglas is a young judge going, well, wait a minute, this isn't right. What's going on here? It definitely makes you think on the morality of what's right and what's wrong. And uh, Michael Douglas does a good job. You also have Yaffa Koto from Alien in the movie. <coughs> St. Francis Phil Spearman. It's a found footage movie. I don't mind for what it is. I reviewed this about a week or two ago before I moved. And then the other film is Cut with Molly Ringwald. Entrapment, this is a film that at the end of the day, uh, mixed bag, it's not that exciting. I thought it had some sluggish pacing. These two did a good job. I wouldn't say I love it, I wouldn't say I hate it. It's kind of there in the middle for me. The Stand. I remember seeing this on TV back in, in the day on ABC when it debuted for, I think it was a four-night event. I believe it was. And I thought the first half was much better than the second half. The main reason I like this is the cast, Gary Sinise especially. The ending, I know that's the way it ends in the book, but... I thought they would do more than just stand there. Really, they didn't even have to fucking be there. Because Miguel Fer uh, not, not Miguel Fer uh, I forgot his name. Max Headroom. Matt Frewer. He just arrives with the bomb. So, like, why the fuck do these people have to go all the way to stand there and die? Like, I, I don't understand that at all. You didn't even do anything. The guy, the crazy guy with the bomb did it. So I, I don't... It's not like you standing there made the guy come with the bomb. I just... I don't know. I just thought it was pretty weak for that much build-up. At least in my opinion. <clears throat> Next up, a show, I character I grew up with, Scooby-Doo. This is the first and second seasons of Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? I do love this show. And then you have the third season. Uh, this is a, one of the films I grew up a lot when I was a kid. The Boo Brothers. Yeah, it has Scrappy-Doo, but I like that. It was it really got into the mystery of Shaggy had this inheritance, and they're looking for clues for jewels and this big treasure that looked around this creepy property. And the Boo Bros were pretty much acting like the Three Stooges. And I'm a Three Stooges fan, so I grew with this quite a bit. I enjoy it. As well as this one, The Reluctant Werewolf, where Shaggy turns to a werewolf and the two of them get into this monster car race. Yeah, these are the two Scooby Doo movies I grew up with a lot when I was a kid. You also have the Ghoul School, the 13 Ghosts of Scooby Doo, which is cool because Vincent Price is a voice in the show. 
Uh, this is a show I wanted to give a shot. What's new Scooby-Doo, the complete first season. I actually don't remember much about this. Uh, someone on the stream mentioned a pup named Scooby-Doo. I do remember watching that when I was a kid. Maybe I'll pick that up. I definitely want to pick up the new Scooby-Doo movies where they met with Batman and the Three Stooges. and Maybe one day I'll pick those up. I like one day down the road. And then the Scooby-Doo 1 and 2 live action films. I actually remember seeing the first one in the theater because I was a Scooby-Doo fan. And I liked it when I saw it in the theater because I thought Matthew Lillard did a great job of Shaggy. I thought the fact they made Scrappy-Doo a villain was pretty ingenious. And yes, James Gunn, Guardians of the Galaxy James Gunn wrote these movies. But I mean, watch them again. The fart jokes and the bad CGI. Yeah, it's... I can't call them good. I do think the first one's better than the second one. <clears throat> Red Planet. Funny enough, back in the day, I liked this more than Mission to Mars. Nowadays, I like Mission to Mars, but I don't like this film. Because really, Val Kilmer's not the problem. Carrie Ann Moss is not the problem. Nothing really happens. There's some space bugs that kill Tom Sizemore. One guy loses air. One guy gets pushed off a cliff. Almost right when they get to Mars. And then a few of them are hunted by this robot that even it doesn't do much. It just much ado about nothing with this movie. It's kind of boring. To be honest. Carry on Moss is just stuck on a ship twiddling her fucking thumbs. She's not, she doesn't even get to the plan. She's just stuck on the ship by herself. The Watch. I, I think someone gave me this DVD to review. I could be rolling. Or I picked this up because I like the cast. You know, I like Ben Stiller and I like Jonah Hill. But this film was really disappointing. It should have been a lot funnier. And it wasn't. It just wasn't that funny. Bad script, bad improv, it's just really disappointing. I have these on Blu-ray, I think they're over there, but this is the DVD I have of House, great movie, I also like House 2, and House 3, aka The Horror Show, so but this is the first house with William Cat, very inventive, fun, horror comedy. Hot Tub Time Machine, very fun. The sequel can suck my dick. War of the Worlds, this is the original. I believe this was sent to me. I can't remember if this was sent to me long ago. I can't remember, but... It was okay, but I actually preferred the Tom Cruise film. To begin a witch. This is a film I believe I saw in the theaters back in the day. And I like this film. I know a lot of people don't. But I like it. I like some of the visual aspects, especially when they walk out and they see just the whole land is red mist. And you realize that's blood. Tom Cruise's character is a bit of a hard ass, but I still like Tom Cruise. I thought Dakota Fanning did a good job. The Sun character was annoying little pissant. And I don't buy him living at the end. I thought that was kind of a... They just should not have had that character in the movie, to be honest. But yeah, I thought the special effects were really good. And... Some thrilling sequences directed by Steven Spielberg. And uh, I liked the film. Again, I know a lot of people don't, but I liked it. Well, they, they died from germs. So, so, that was the original as well. Do you hate the original? Warriors of the Lost World. A Warrior of the Lost World. I remember seeing this quite a few times when I was a kid, and I enjoy it. You have a motorcycle that talks, like bingo, bingo, bingo. You have Robert Ginty, the exterminator, fucking people up on this badass motorcycle. It's like a post-apocalyptic future. Donald Pleasance is your villain. Percy's combined from Star Trek The Motion Picture is the love interest. 
I had a lot of fun with Warrior of the Lost World. I actually want to rewatch this sometime. I, I had fun with this movie. I like the score too. This is just a really low rating on IMDb. I don't think it deserves that. I don't think it's nearly that bad of a film. Now, that's just my opinion though. But yeah, I don't think it's nearly that bad. <clears throat> These are films I wish would get a Blu-ray release. Watchers 1 and 2. I mean, Watchers 1 and 2 got it, thankfully. Why can't this? That's why I thought, oh, Watchers 1 and 2, cool, we don't see Watchers 1 and 2. Because they're in the same artisan entertainment two pack. Like Watchers 1 and 2 is almost in the same way as this. Why can't we have Watchers 1 and 2? I guarantee you, I'm not the only one who would want that, but, I mean, this is full screen, it's all on one disc, so it's not the best picture quality, this DVD apparently is really hard to come by, because this DVD is out of print, I'm guessing this DVD is worth a pretty penny, but I'm not getting rid of it, because I love these movies, Watchers 2 is actually my favorite, but I love these films, these are childhood favorites, I reviewed them on the channel long ago. And this film I like. It's not as good as the first two, but I like it. In particular, I like... Oh, why can I not... A Wings Hauser, The Weed. And it's definitely a bit more like Predator. Weak uh, creature design. It's definitely low budget. But uh, I do like the movie as a time waster. This is from the director of Sniper, but I don't think he actually directed it. I think he just produced it. Could be wrong. Oh, speaking of which, House 2, the second story. I do have this on Blu-ray, but this is the DVD. A sequel that's much more kid-friendly than the first one, but I still enjoy it. I, I think I reviewed these house films on the channel. The Watcher... I wanted to like this because Keanu Reeves is the villain and James Spader is the good guy. I like those two actors, but it just didn't come together. Uh, maybe this director just didn't know what the fuck he was doing. I know there's a bad story because Keanu Reeves didn't want to do the film. And either his... I think his... He signed it, but then someone signed it for him. So he didn't really sign it, the contract to be in the film. I can't remember all the details. I know there's some shady business going on. Which is why you don't have his face on the cover. And why they kind of hide Keanu Reeves. Like his name is on there, but they kind of hide it so you have to squint. But, uh, <clears throat> but they have him on the back. I mean, this is a film I want to like, but... It's a flawed film. I just remember it being fairly boring. The only good long-term films, in my opinion, the first two. The first one I saw in the theater back in the day. I really liked the lead guy, Desmond Harrington. I thought it had some really awesome moments. Like the axe that just lands right next to the guy's face when it smashes to a tree. Now, I thought the director, Sally, didn't go off to do much, Bob Schmidt. And then Ron Turn 2, I thought it was a pretty decent direct video sequel. You had a lady who was a bit more promiscuous and the black guy who you think those are the two who are going to die, but no, those are the two who live. So I thought it, it played around with the conventions. Henry Rollins was a badass. He had some nice uh, gore moments. I wish Henry Rollins lived. That's my one gripe with this, but uh, long term two, I do like. The last decent long term film. <clears throat> This is a film I have because I wanted to give another shot. And it's it's not that good of a movie. Hugh Jabman's not the problem. It's just... Much Ado About Nothing. And they really fucked up Deadpool in this. 
damn bit. He might as well not have even fucking been there. And Taylor Kish sucked. As damn bit. Oh, it seemed like I wanted Wolverine to do more in the film, if that makes sense. I can't believe I still have this fucking movie. <clears throat> I think this is one of those films I got because I wanted to give it a shot way back in the day. Wanted. One of those films you find for like 50 cents or a dollar. But I don't like James McAvoy. I mean, the, the curve in the bullets, the interesting idea. Morgan Freeman, Angelina Jolie I like, but I'm not a James McAvoy fan. And, uh, yeah, it's wanted. I reviewed this when I did my Jet Li marathon of American films. War. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Fuck this movie! I know my friend Afri is a fan of this film. We agree to disagree on that. To me, this is bullshit. I mean, it seems like it'd be a big fight between the two. It's really not, and the director fucked up. It's like, we could have a cool fight, but no, I don't want to do that too. Even Jet Li didn't like the film for good reason. And J.C. Stephen's like a bad guy, but then he's like, oh, I apologize, but then nothing really comes of that. Yeah, I, I didn't care for the story of the film. I thought the action scenes were rather weak. I, I ranted on the film. It's still on the channel. Oh, Hills of Ice 2. This is where it's at. I don't know why I... I guess I put the Blu-ray of the first one over there for some reason, but Hills of Ice 2. Time Waster. It's not a good movie, but I, I can watch it as a fun time waster. It, this does seem like an 80s slasher film, to be honest. I do mean that in a good way. This is a film <clears throat> that, you know what, I actually kind of wanted to like his, the third act. I thought was fun, but the sequel is a piece of shit. I'm surprised I still have this. Hostile. The ending of this I liked. When the guys did revenge on the motherfuckers. But that's pointless, just Hostile 2. They just killed the guy in five minutes because Eli Roth's a fucking moron. So fuck the movie. I don't know why I still have this, but I think I keep stuff in case I ever want to rant on it and I just pop it in instead of renting it or something. I mean, if I sold it, I'd get maybe a quarter. So what's the point? Hot Fuzz, not as good as Shaun of the Dead, but still a fun comedy. Space Truckers, quirky, fun, fun idea. Dennis Hopper in the lead role by Stuart Gordon, who did Reanimator among other films. <clears throat> Space Invaders is something I remember seeing quite a bit when I was a kid. Um, it's not a good movie, although I do like the special effects on the creatures. And the, there's a couple of bits of charm. I think the human characters are what really brings it down. And I don't like using the word cheesy, but this is a film that you can use for that. Space Jam, I do enjoy. I, I enjoyed it ever since I saw it as a kid. I like Michael Jordan, I like the Looney Tunes, I like basketball, and I love the soundtrack. Space Cowboys. It was cool to see these four in the same film together. And Clint would do a little bit of different path than what he usually does in movies. You know, the go into space and, and things of that nature. Nice to see Eastwood do something a little bit different. And I thought these four were really good in the film. <clears throat> Let's see. I always forget there's so much shit, so much stuff in this, man. Damn, there's a lot of stuff in here. A lot of stuff, holy shit. Forgot how big these boxes were. 
I absolutely forgot how big these boxes were. Damn. Gigantic. Fuck. Damn, damn, damn. Come on. Come on, motherfuckers. Try to do some of this stuff here. Let's get to the bottom. And that way I'll make it easier for the cleanup. Come on, damn it. Damn, sorry about that, folks. Damn, case broken. Superman Commando. I remember seeing this when I was a kid, and to be honest, it's the only film of Hulk Hogan that I enjoy. It's goofy, it's silly, but I have fun with this film. And I think it has a, some pretty damn good jokes. Let me guess. You don't pound my face. What are you, you serious? This is the 90s. We're gonna sue you. So I don't, and I, I had fun with it. I know originally Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito, I think we're going to do that film, but it didn't come to be. But I, I like the film. Some of All Fears is a film I wanted to like. Because I like Ben Affleck, and I like Morgan Freeman, and it's a Jack Ryan movie. I like Patriot Games, and Clear and Present Danger. I would say Clear and Present Danger is my favorite Jack Ryan film. I didn't see the Chris, uh, what the fuck is his name, Chris Pine one. But this film is pretty boring. It's not Ben Affleck's fault, it's just the movie itself I thought was rather boring. Super bad, fun comedy, I still think it holds up to this day. Hilarious film. I have this on Blu-ray somewhere, but... This is the DVD Super Mario Brothers. I like the film. I know a lot of people don't. I know it's not like the game, but to me, it's impossible to make that game into a movie. I'm sorry. Uh, a stereotypical Italian-American going, It's -a me and Mario with a come catcher mustache, jumping on turtles, jumping on Goombas that look like giant turds, eating flowers, shooting fireballs, Eating mushrooms, being ten times taller, and fighting dinosaurs and turtles. Or bullets that come alive. I don't know how the fuck you make that into a movie. You can feel free to tell me how. At least a live action film, so. I like the cast, I like the music, I like the production design, I like the creativity. So, Super Mario Brothers, I, I had fun with the film. Story of Echoes, I think it's much better than Sixth Sense. I think it's much better than Sixth Sense. One of Kev Kevin Bacon's best performances. Strange Invaders and Invaders from Mars. Have this for the Toby Hooper collection. Because he did this one. And this one I barely remember. I barely remember the film. Karen Black, no, no, that's the other one. Uh, Paul Lamatt, Nancy Allen, Louise Fletcher. Oh, Louise Fletcher was actually in both these movies. Maybe yeah. Phil after we watch it again. This is a DVD that was sent to me a long time ago, and I reviewed it on the channel. Street Fighter II, the anime movie. Definitely better than the Street Fighter live action movies. And you get to see Chun Li naked in a shower. On the certain aspects I didn't like, Guile is useless in the movie. I like Guile in the video game. He's so useless he's not even on the cover. <laughs> yeah, I like Guile. They made him useless. 
thought that was kind of weird, like Chun Li, she gets naked in the shower, and then she gets the shit kicked out of her. But uh, still, I I enjoy the film. It, it did nicely. Chun Li's titties in the shower scene. Street trash, very entertaining, uh, goopy, dirty, uh, independent horror comedy. Definitely a one-of-a-kind type of film, street trash, very colorful special effects. To me, this is like a good version of a trauma film. That's how I look at it. Like, trauma film done right, in my opinion. It's street trash. Stuck. Decent Stuart Gordon film. It's about this guy, played by Stephen Ray, gets stuck in the windshield of this car. If he moves around, he might bleed to death. And I Mina mean, Savari is like, oh, I don't know. I don't want to call the cops because I'll get in trouble. I'll get arrested. And he's stuck and he's wondering what he should do next, how to survive. Interesting original idea. Pretty good flip by Stuart Gordon. The stuff, I do have this film on Blu-ray, but this is the DVD. To me, one of Larry Cohen's best films. Love his quirky dialogue and um, imaginative scripts. Taking crazy concepts. <clears throat> this is a Blu-ray that was sent to me a long time ago. Well, maybe not too long ago, but Suspiria. Which I did like. Cool to have this on Blu-ray. My favorite is Deep Red, but and Phenomena. I've been, yeah, it was cool to see that on Blu-ray. I do like the film. <clears throat> Next up, The Time Machine. I like this film. I think it's a bit underrated. I thought it was a good adventure action movie. I thought Guy Pearce did a wonderful job. I enjoyed the special effects. You have Jeremy Irons as the villain of the piece. I like the look of the Morlocks. Stan Winston had a hand in the effects. But I thought it was a nice action adventure movie. And Guy Pierce, nice to see him in this kind of movie. But yeah, I quite enjoyed the time machine. A bit of an underrated flick. <clears throat> the Tingler, this is one of those films that great, it says two ninety nine by a guy for like fifty cents. Why don't you ever watch his uh, Vincent Price? Um, I don't remember much about it. Other than it being kind of a fun idea. If you scream, the tingler can be destroyed. If you don't, it will sever the spinal column and kill the individual. Uh, kind of an intriguing idea. <laughs> Something wicked this way comes. Someone actually asked me about this, and I got the DVD, and I have not been able to see it yet. Sorry, it's still a bit darker, but you guys can still see. Soul Man, this is one of those films I got for cheap because I'm like, I gotta see this movie at least once. I mean, Mark Watson is going to Harvard Law School on a scholarship. The scholarship is for a black applicant. There's a problem. Mark is white. Brother, is he in for an education? Soul Man. Yep. And C. Towns Hall is wearing blackface. And directed by Steve Miner, who did Fire the 13th Part 2 and 3, and... But you know what? If Ray Don Chon and James Earl Jones did not have a problem with the film, kind of hard for me to have a problem with it, because they're in the film. Again, if they had a problem with it, but they seemingly didn't. The Musketeer, this is a film I wanted to give a shot because it's written by Peter Hyams, who I enjoy as a director, but this is a very forgettable, lame action film. This is like one of those films I saw all the time at a used store or a pawn shop, and I think I'll pick it up. But yeah, it's pretty forgettable. I can't believe I have this. How, why the fuck do I have this movie? Uh, this is one of those films I picked up for 50 cents to give a look. 
Lady in the Water, and once again, M. Night Shyamalan, your piece of shit director. I have this film on Blu-ray, I think it's underrated, The Swarm, I think it's an entertaining disaster movie about killer bees. I like the scope of it, I like Michael Caine, I like the score by Jerry Goldsmith, I like the cast, I like The Swarm. You have Sweeners, fun movie, fun comedy, I think it's hilarious, very entertaining. I love Sweeners. Very, very funny movie. <clears throat> this is given by to me by a good friend of mine, The Sword and the Sorcerer, because he, he had another copy. Not sure why this film's not on Blu-ray, but I love the crazy sword the guy has. That it, you know, blaze can shoot off. You got nudity, you got some gore. Very fun sword and sorcery movie. By Alba Pion. Down with Direct Cyborg and many other films. The Sword and the Sorcerer. There you go. Uh, this one I have because of T Force. T Force is actually a pretty fun action movie from, I believe, PM Entertainment. Yeah, PM Entertainment. Which they did a lot of, like, these. Tons of action filled filled up in these movies, and T Force is no exception. The others, not so much, but uh, T Force it doesn't have that in the movie. <laughs> but uh, Jaskalia did a nice job, and if you want uh, directed video films back in the day, they had tons of action. Watch PM Entertainment films like T Force. You definitely get your bang for your buck in those movies. Uh, the Tatum Pelham One Two Three, which is a pretty decent flick, mainly for the the cast. Nice to see Walter Matthau in this kind of movie. Terminal Velocity, really enjoyable film. Pretty damn underrated in my opinion. Love Terminal Velocity. Really impressive stunts and action scenes. The Thing from the World. Maybe my favorite film from the 1950s. Quite enjoyable. The Terror Within and Dead Space. Got this man for The Terror Within. Which I enjoy. I think it's a fun creature feature. Granted, inspired by Alien. But it's, an, it's a fun, entertaining ripoff. Dead Space. Nothing to do with the video game. And Dead Space is a piece of shit. I actually got this for 50 cents because one day maybe I'll do a stream for uh, a commentary, ranting commentary on this. Yep, 50 cents. One day I want to do a ranting commentary on this fucking film. Streaming with you guys. Because I'm not sitting through that fucking thing alone. Now, this is a good movie, 13 Ghosts. I actually like it more than the original. I thought Tony Shalhoub and Matthew Lillard did a good job with this. Tick, someone was asked on a live stream, they were asking me about this film. I do have it. I think I reviewed it. I could be wrong, but I believe I reviewed it. If not, it's a fun creature feature with some impressive special effects. Nice to see a young Seth Green in the movie. Uh, Clint Howard's in the film as well. Good uh, creature feature flick. Again, with some really impressive special effects, especially in the third act, where you have like this big tit come out of a person. Actually, it's from uh, Alfonso Ribeiro, the guy from First Prince of Bel Air, Carlton. He's in the film as well, and he gets killed, and then a giant tit comes out of him. Again, some really impressive, gory special effects. Time to Kill, great drama with an impressive cast. And the original Time Machine, which I do enjoy. I like the remake more, but I do enjoy this film. I thought Rod Taylor, who's in The Birds, he did a really good job in the lead role.
The Gate, good movie. Granted, this kid is not in the movie based on this cover. I know this has a Blu-ray release. Maybe one day I'll pick it up. But, uh, yeah, this shows what you can do with a low budget. The imagination, the creativity, the effects they pulled off with a low budget was pretty and damn impressive. With a very young Steven Dorff. Galaxy of Terror, enjoyable film. None of this is in the movie. I don't know why it has this cover, but... Again, does it's one of those movies where it deals with your fears or your what's going on in your head and manifests itself physically. You use some really impressive special effects for a low budget. And you have a role by uh, Sid Haig and Robert England, which is nice. Again, some really impressive stuff uh, effects-wise in this. And quite a few features. G-Force... Uh, like a time waster, dumb, fun time waster, kind of cute, you know, silly idea. And in the voice cast, you have Sam Rockwell, Nicolas Cage, John Favreau, Steve Buscemi. And pretty decent voice cast. And even, like, uh... Yeah, Tracy Morgan, which I'm not a fan of, but, I mean, it's for kids, but I had some dumb fun with it. I, I, I've seen much worse. <laughs> I really have. So, there. <clears throat> Get these next. Very, very nice guy. Mega, Tor Mega Pork Chop Express, if he's watching. I still thank you for these. Video Nasties, The Definitive Guide, Volume 1 and 2. Very, very impressive documentaries about what went on in the UK and how the media was being suppressed, how these movies were being suppressed, how you would be in trouble if you watched or sold these movies, the horror films. Very interesting stuff about a time in the UK history. And plus they have impressive supporting DVDs where they go through each of these titles, and they have the trailers, and they talk about each of these films. Very impressive uh, stuff. If you're a fan of movies, if you're a fan of movie history, these are definitely worth a look. I did reviews of these on the channel. If you're watching, thank you so much for these. G.I. Joe, the animated movie. Uh, this is fun because you got Sergeant Slaughter as one of the G.I. Joe. He's definitely the best part of the movie. Sergeant Slaughter's a badass in that movie. <clears throat> Kingdom of the Spiders. Uh, I was entertained by the film. Creeped out because I hate spiders. Although, the real killing of spiders and squishing, not needed. Not needed at all. Granted, I don't like spiders, but you don't need to kill them for a movie. You know, and not as good as Arachnophobia, but I still got some enjoyment out of Kingdom of the Spiders. I thought William Shatner did a good job. <clears throat> These films I picked up because I like the actors and I wanted to give them a shot. Journey and Journey 2. I like Brendan Fraser. I like The Rock. So I wanted to give these a shot. Eh. They are what they are. I've seen better. I've seen worse. Ghost. Very heartfelt film. Great love story. Wonderful cast. Uh, very sad but beautiful ending. Where Patrick Swayze goes up to heaven. Brings a tear to your eye each time. This is one that was sent to me a, a while ago. Ghost Watch. Interesting idea. It's a news program on the BBC, a live broadcast where they're in like a reported haunted house and crazy things happen. Uh, the drama caused an uproar and was banned from repeat transmission because people thought it was real. When it, when it, uh, I didn't think it was all that, but whatever. I know I have the other films, but this is Ghoulies 3, Ghoulies Go to College. Which I had dumb fun with. Yeah, I had dumb fun with it. I have the others around here somewhere. 
Actually, no, Gooey's 1 and 2 I have on Blu-ray over there. I hate Gooey's 1, but I love Gooey's 2. <coughs> Next up, people were asking me about this film, Westworld, which I enjoy. I never saw the show, but I enjoy this. I believe this was a gift someone sent to me a while ago. And I never saw the sequel, Future World, but I like this. I like you, Brenner, as the robot. Um... Richard Benjamin and James Brolin as the two unlucky participants. Love the idea behind the film. Yul Brenner was the Terminator before the Terminator. So I quite enjoyed Westworld by Michael Crichton. Actually, you might want to watch that again sometime. We Were Soldiers, good war movie. Uh, Randall Wallace, the writer of Braveheart, directed this film. A pretty decent Vietnam film. You have Greg Kinnear, Sam Elliott, Terry Russell, Madeline Stahl, Barry Pepper. No one really talks about this film, but I thought Mel Gibson did a really good job in this movie. <clears throat> oh, here's the sequel to D2. Not as good as the first one. I picked this up because I liked the first movie, so I wanted to give it a shot. Not as good. I think this DVD... I don't know if they came out with a new Blu-ray DVD of this. I know at one point this DVD was rare. Get Smart. I wanted to like this film. It just seemed like a goofy, silly, fun comedy. It was rather unfunny and boring, to be honest, watching it. it didn't care for it. I'll be honest, I like this film more and people would shoot me for it. Geely. It's not great, but it's not one of the worst films ever. I've seen a hundred movies that are way worse than Geely. It's not as good. You want to see a better version of this with Ben Affleck? Watch Chasing Amy with Kevin Smith, but this is not one of the worst films ever. I'm like, it's there, it's a time waster, but it's one of the worst films ever? What? Oh, this is the Ghoulies 4. Yeah, I got this for dirt cheap. And I have the original Prom Night on there, so... I, re I believe I reviewed the Ghoulies films, and this is how I saw Ghoulies 4. I could be wrong, but I swear I did. I swear I remember ranting on Ghoulies 4. I think it's still up. <clears throat> From Beyond, not as good as Reanimator, but has some nice special effects moments. I have this on Blu-ray, but this is the DVD of From Dust Till Dawn, my favorite vampire film, my favorite Robert Rodriguez film. And From Dust Till Dawn, I like the sequel. I think it's actually an underrated sequel. Yeah, it doesn't have the budget, so the effects are not the best, but I like the camera work of Scott Spiegel, the weird POV shots he does. It makes the film interesting. And Robert Patrick, I thought, did a good job in the lead role, as did... Was it Bo Hopkins? Yeah, Bo Hopkins. I like this film. I think it's an underrated sequel. This third one is a piece of shit, though. <clears throat> Frozen, uh, Adam Green's best film. I know he's more known for the Hatchet films, but this is a much better movie. Full Eclipse, I reviewed this when I reviewed a couple werewolf films. Good werewolf film. By Anthony Hickox, who did Waxwick 1 and 2. Interesting idea where this group of the secret police unit are actually werewolves. And they take out bad guys. And they want Mario Van Peebles as a new recruit. But they, he realizes they're going above the wall. You also have Patsy Kinsey from Lethal Weapon 2. Bruce Payne. Yeah, I enjoy this film. Thing is made for cable, HBO, but uh, I thought they did a good job with it. This is one that someone had sent to me long ago, and I liked Seven Psychopaths. Thought the cast worked well together, had some pretty funny moments. I swear I have this film on Blu ray, I could be wrong, but uh, Inner Space. Fun comedy by Joe Dante with Dennis Quaid and Martin Short.
This is a film I know I've seen, but I don't remember anything about The Last Winter. I know I've seen this film, but I don't remember a damn thing about it, so. This is the one we'll have to rewatch sometime. I can't, I don't remember anything about it. Ghost Point Blank. I think I reviewed this film. I love the film. High Fidelity. I remember not minding. The thing that sticks out is Jack Black talks about Evil Dead 2. But Gross Point Blank is a lot of fun. Very entertaining movie. <coughs> Grizzly. Best movie with a killer bear, in my opinion. Yeah, it's a ripoff of Jaws, but it's a fun ripoff. Grilled. Once again, a film I don't remember anything about. And I picked up because Ray Romano. Okay, and you also have Burt Reynolds. But yeah, I don't remember anything of this movie. I have this film on Blu-ray from overseas. It's a childhood favorite of mine. I love this film to death. Stephen King's Graveyard Shift. Love this film. Absolutely adore this movie. <clears throat> the Ghost in the Darkness. I don't mind it as a time waster. Uh, Michael Douglas, uh, his character dies a bit too early in the film for my liking. Uh... I kind of wish he was the lead and Val Kilmer was the other guy, but uh, I didn't mind it for what it was. I could, I could watch the film. <clears throat> the Island. Michael Bay film that I enjoy. A bit underrated. Beautiful musical score, some really stellar action sequences. I thought the cast, especially Ewan McGregor, did a great job. Uh, the Island is pretty fun. I know I ripped some movie off, but I don't care. And then the island, I remember a guy named Dustin Keckler who used to be on YouTube. I don't know what happened to him. Um, he gave this to me. And I like the film. It's flawed. But Michael Caine gets a 50 caliber and wipes out a bunch of pirates at the end. So that made me fall in love with the movie. Got this three pack of Tom Berenger, mainly for Sniper, which is a good flick. One shot, one kill. And then you have Sniper 2. Which is alright, but I stepped down from the first one, and I know I have the third one around here somewhere. But that's Sniper 1 and 2. I think right here we have Sni Sniper 3. Again, I stepped down from the first two, but... Yeah, yeah this was more of a forgettable one. And this is the last sniper film I saw. I know they made like 15 more for some reason. That didn't need to be a franchise. <clears throat> Half Bait, fun comedy. Sorry, I'm going through these a little bit faster because my voice is giving out. I forgot how many of these th movies there were. Don't remember much about Jimmy Hollywood, but had fun with Gun Ho, which is a Ron Howard movie. Groundhog's Day, one of my favorite Bill Murray films. Gone Fishing, it's silly, it's goofy, but I like these two guys. I like their banter together. <clears throat> the Good Son, I enjoyed this film. But McCoy Culkin and Elijah Wood did a good job in it. I still have these films, just one day I'll, I'll review these, but I'm not in the fair frame of mind. Jeepers Creepers 1 and 2. I didn't see the third one. The thing is, this is directed by a pedophile, and when you watch the films, he put his pedophile ideas in the film. If you don't believe me, watch these films again. Like Jeepers Creepers, there's a moment where the creature smells the guy's underwear, and the guy, some extra goes, he was smelling your underwear. In the second film, the director is literally having the camera on countless shirtless guys sunbathing on a school bus. And a creeper is looking through a window and licking the window looking at guys. And the creeper wants body parts, mainly of guys. You notice the creeper, most of his victims are men that he wants. They're pieces to eat. And he's called the creeper. That's what I mean. Victor Selva the pedophile put his pedophile shit in the movie. If you don't believe me, watch the films again. I'm not making the shit up. 
It's there. Hard Candy. Good movie. It's pretty intense of a flick. An interesting story where at first you're wondering, like, who's the victim and who's not the victim. And sort of an intriguing case of cat and mouse. And good performances by the two leads. This I got for very cheap because I thought maybe one day I'd do a commentary on this. The happening. Fun comedy, but it's not supposed to be a comedy. <laughs> The Hanover, the only good one of the three. I still enjoy this. Here we go, I was looking for this. Sometimes they come back one and two. The second one I don't care for so much, but the first one I liked with Timothy... Uh, Tim Matheson. We also have Robert Russler from Elm Street 2. By Tom McLaughlin, who did Friday the 13th Part 6. This is a film that it's low budget, it's hampered by its low budget, but I still enjoy it for what it is. Super hybrid. It's a killer car film where the car is like this monstrous, possibly alien creature with tentacles. And it can kind of morph itself into other cars. And it's killing people in a car garage. Uh, again, for a directed video, I had some dumb fun with this. Solaris, this is a film I remember seeing, I don't remember anything about. <laughs> but it has George Clooney in it. Let's see. <clears throat> yeah, let me put some of these back here. Hey, I'm sorry about that, folks. I didn't think this video would go on so long. But there you go. <coughs> you got <coughs> Shawshank Redemption, which I reviewed. I love this film. Fantastic movie. Sorry for the squeaking of the chair. Shaun of the Dead. I think the best film Edgar Wright has done. Still a very funny movie. The Sherlock Holmes films. I still think the first one is the better movie, but it's fun to see Robert Downey Jr. play the role. He does a great job with it. And he has some nice banter with Jude Law. Raising Arizona, one of the Coen Brothers' best films. My favorite is The Big Lebowski, but this is a fun movie. <coughs> Reindeer Games. Not that bad of a film. I like Ben Affleck, Charlize Theron, Gary Sinise. It, it it seems like the film tries to do one too many twists, but uh, I liked it. I thought John Frank Hammer did a pretty decent job with the flick. Race to Witch Mountain. This is why The Rock should not do a Big Total Little China remake, because he did it with this. It is a remake. It's about a guy who's a driver, who's a normal guy, who gets sucked into a extraordinary situation. And I thought this was pretty decent. I actually think this is one of The Rock's best movies. It's a family film, but it's a fun film. We're drawing Harry, one of Harrison Ford's most underrated performances. The Ref, Kim Spacey's a dirt bag nowadays, just what he did in real life, but Dennis Leary is what makes this film. He makes this film hilarious. The Shining. I know there's a sequel coming out called Dr. Sleep. Intriguing trailer. Still not sure if you need a sequel though. I know it's based on the Stephen King novel. But this is my favorite John Nicholson and my favorite Stanley Kubrick movie. Snakes have a plane. Saw this in the theater when it came out. Had some dumb fun with it. The CGI on the snakes, they're bad, but you know, th there's some fun B-movie stuff in this movie. I, I have fun with the film. Slither, pretty decent flip by James Gunn. Nathan Fillion is great in the movie. Slither. <clears throat> Sleepy Hollow, one of my favorite Tim Burton movies. Sky Captain World of Tomorrow. I have this on Blu-ray somewhere. 
I reviewed this film a long while ago. I like this film. I think it's a bit underrated. I love the visual style of this and the creativity. It made it look like the Fleischer Superman cartoons of the 40s. <coughs> Sad this film bombs so badly. I feel bad for the director. Silver Bullet, one of my favorite werewolf films. I thought Corey Haim did a great job. Iron Eagle, fuck the sequels. This is the only good one. And I like Top Gun, but I would say I like this film even more. I think because the appeal of a guy trying to rescue his dad was just stuck to me more than when uh, just Tom Cruise trying to fuck a girl. There's more to it than that, but I like Top Gun, but I like Iron Eagle more. I rule by, I have a review of this film on the channel. One of my favorite Will Smith movies. I like I will about a lot. Into the Blue saw this for Paul Walker, but I think this is one of Paul Walker's weakest films. Pretty boring movie. Revenge of the Nerds. This has all four movies. To me, the only good one is the first one. The sequel, the second one is there. Eh. But the first one's really good. Three and four are fucking... Crap. The Jerk, fun Steve Martin comedy. Jeopard's Monster Slayer, a film that Sally got completely forgotten. Would like to have seen sequels to this, but I thought this was an entertaining film about a guy who has a anger problem and defends his college school against monsters. But it has Robert England in it. Entertaining movies, some good effects, but again, the film bomb badly. And no one talks about it. No one remembers the film. Love Stephen King's It. Don't care for the new one. I know there's a documentary coming out. I look forward to that. Uh, these were a gift. I think the guy said at one time he's going to send the third film, but it never came around, which is cool. I have it on DVD. But this is Dress Pub 1 and 2 on Blu-ray. I have a reviews of these films on the channel. Jumpa Jack Flash, my favorite Whoopi Goldberg film and one of my favorite 80s comedies. Judgment Night, I have a review of this up on the channel. This is a wonderful gift from a nice guy. Love this film. Very underrated film, Judgment Night. Again, feel free to check out my review. Joyride, I enjoy this film. Uh, Paul Walker, Steve Zahn did a good job. Tim Levine as your bad guy. I actually prefer the 29-minute alternate ending, which I don't think is on the Blu-ray. I could be wrong, but uh, it is on the DVD. You just have to... At least one of those things, you click on it, and then when the icon appears on your DVD, when the movie's playing, you click on it. But I prefer that over the official ending. Giant of Mind, this is a film I'm pretty mixed on. There's elements I like, there's elements I don't. I like the idea and the look of the film, but a flipper kills Dolph Lundgren. I'm like, what the fuck? A dolphin kills Dolph Lundgren? Was well, because he has dolphin in his name? Dolphin kills Dolph. John Candy Trilogy, I reviewed this when I did my John Candy Marathon. Uh, going Berserk was there, but I quite enjoy Uncle Buck in the Great Outdoors. Again, I reviewed all of John Candy's movies on the channel. Feel free to check those out. I barely remember Joe Somebody. Welcome to Mooseport. I remember it being there, but not as bad as people make it out to be. I like Ray Romano. I like Gene Hackman, so it's there. I have this on Blu-ray, but Killer Comes from Outer Space. Love the film. Love the creativity, the ingenuity. The special effects, very creative movie. Very original film, too. Okay, let me get these out. And get to the bottom of this as well. A lot longer than I thought it'd be this video, but maybe some people will enjoy it. And move you guys over here. And all right, let me get a couple of these. 
Turbulence is a film I wanted to give another watch because I like the trailer and I like Ray Liotta, but there's some good practical effects, but pretty lame movie, and Lauren Holly just did not make a convincing lead lady in the film. Turistas, I remember not minding the movie. I like Josh Duhamel in the movie, Olivia Wilde. I remember one chase scene and like this underwater caverns being decent. Oh, I don't hate the film, Therese does. It's, it's there. Ah, the Tremors Attack Pack, which has the first four films. Uh, really, the first two are the only good ones. Three is meh. Four is shitty. And the new ones are shitty, too. But the first two, to me, are classic. Yes, there was a TV show, and then they tried to do another TV show, but with Kevin Bacon. Got this for the collection. There's a couple of decent episodes, but you tell, even by the end of the season, they were running out of ideas. Because Tremors, there's, you can't do a TV show on it. There's not much you can do. There were a couple alright episodes, but I didn't even, 13 episodes, they were running out of ideas. You really were. <clears throat> Trick or Treat. I know this is a guy that actually directed the new Godzilla movie, which I still haven't seen yet. One of my favorite anthology films. This is a fantastic horror anthology movie. Troll and Troll 2. Troll 2 is uh, so bad it's good. Troll 1 is just bad. Tron Legacy, I liked this more back in the day, but it doesn't hold up. The special effects are good, the score is good, but the story and what they did, I didn't vote with the original Tron, but what they did with the original Bruce Boxleitner character, how they just threw that character away at the end, literally into the abyss, and did nothing. It really does seem like a slap in the face to fans, and, and yeah, I didn't grow up with it, so I didn't have as much anger, but I can see why people would. Visual fees to look at, but not much underneath. I reviewed this multiple times. I love this. It's one of my favorite found footage movies. Excellent film. Love Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. One of the best horror comedies in the past. 10 years easily. Criminally underrated. There's talks of a sequel, but I don't buy anything until it's actually made. <clears throat> Someone was actually asking me about this in a live stream, Trapped in Paradise. I like the film. I thought the three worked well together, and it's a fun Christmas comedy has a good heart to it as well. These three criminals and sort of the niceness of this town infect them to where they change their ways. WALL-E, my favorite Pixar film, beautiful animation, love this film very much. I think it's a fantastic movie, WALL-E. Titan A.E., criminally underrated, deserves a Blu-ray. I know this film bombed and it killed the studio. What was it? Uh, what was the name of the studio? It was for Fox, but it was like... Was it just called like Fox Animation or something? And anyway, it killed it, sad to say. But I like it. You have Matt Damon, Bill Pullman, John Leguizamo, Nathan Lane, Drew Barrymore as the voices. Wonderful soundtrack by Don Bluth and Gary Goldman. Very underrated film. Wish this had a Blu-ray HD release. Love Titan A.E. <clears throat> this is Creature from 1985. Only here is called Titan Find. This is a DVD that was limited. Now, I don't know if you can get this anymore. I think it's out of print. But, again, under, what's this, AKA Creature. But to see in widescreen and better picture quality. And this has a couple features as well. 
I enjoy this film. I think this is a fun creature feature flick. Entertaining special effects. I like some of the cast members. Yeah, it may be a ripoff of Alien, but I think it's an enjoyable one. I like it quite a bit. I reviewed this when I did my Chris Farley marathon. Love Tommy Boy. Hilarious film. <clears throat> Got this for my Mark Dutoskis collection, Redline, which I don't remember much about this. I know he's the bad guy and Rugger Howe is the good guy. And on top of the world, which is a pretty decent flick. I mean, you got Peter Weller, Dennis Hopper, Tia Carrera, David Allen Greer, Kira Hayuki Tadawa. You have a crazy cast. And footage of this was stolen and put into some Steen Seagal movies. Yep, but top of the world, pretty decent flick. The Town. Very solid movie. I thought Ben Affleck did a wonderful job directing this. Him and Jeremy Werner worked wonderfully together. Good movie, The Town. <coughs> so, take the rest of these out. Again, sorry for my voice, folks. U-Turn is a movie I wanted to check out because it's an Oliver Stone film. You got Sean Penn, Jennifer Lopez, Nick Nolte, Billy Bob Thornton, Powers Booth. Ended up not liking the film, sad to say. Just wasn't for me. Undisputed 3, I thought I had Undisputed 2 around here somewhere, but I can't find it. I remember I liked that and Undisputed 3. Good, uh, much better than the first one. <clears throat> this mainly got for the Vagrant, which I enjoy with Bill Paxton. I reviewed that on the channel. Videodrome, one of my favorite David Cronenberg films. My favorite is The Fly, but this is up there. This is the Criterion Collection. James Woods did a wonderful job. Really excellent special effects. Virus. Pat got this for cheap long ago because it has good special effects. That's the only thing good about it. Jamie Lee Curtis, her character is 100% pointless. You watch it, name one thing she does at the end. She gets caught, captured, tortured, and one of the boring bald ones saves her. Jamie Lee Curtis doesn't do anything. She's certainly no Ripley in the movie. Good special effects, that's all the film has going for it. You want to see a better version of the movie? Watch Moontrack. Well, this is what I was talking about before, the Watchers 1 and 2, this is my Watchers 1 and 2. I have it on Blu-ray, but I kept the DVD because, well, I, I like these films. I reviewed these films. They're two great movies, much better than Cabin in the Woods. I have the film on Blu-ray, but decided to keep this just because, you know, nameable. I enjoyed this film quite a bit. Zombie. I would say my favorite Lucio Fulci film. Some good gory special effects. Especially that one splinter in the eye. You also have a zombie fighting a shark. <clears throat> then Nameable 2. Pretty decent sequel. You know, a worthy follow-up to the first one. I, only, uh, it's, I don't think it's as atmospheric as the first one. But uh, it was nice to see the characters come back. To reprise their roles. Zombieland, fun comedy. I don't think you need a sequel, but they're doing it anyway, but fun comedy. <clears throat> Unknown. <clears throat> eh, it's there. Not a big fan of the movie, but fun to have for the Liam Neeson collection. UHF, pretty fun comedy. Has some nice parodies. I thought Weird Al Yankovic actually did a pretty decent job with the film. Definitely out there. And then these films I wanted to give another shot. Underworld and Underworld Evolution. And no, I did not pay that much for that. The first one, not a fan of. The sequel, not that bad, honestly. I thought it was better than the first one. The first Underworld I saw in the theater, I was bored. 
gave it another shot. I was still bored with it. Yeah, I think the second one and the fourth one, Underworld Awakening, I think are much better. Heather's very dark, twisted, fun, uh, dark comedy. I don't know why they tried to make a TV show, whatever, out of this. Earth Girls are easy. Only got this because of the cast. Jim Carrey, Jeff Goldblum. It was there. Wasn't big on it. It was there. Stupid squeaking chair. <clears throat> Used Cars, fun movie with Robert Zemeckis directing, starring Kurt Russell. Actually has a commentary, Robert Zemeckis, Kurt Russell, and Bob Gale, which is a fun commentary. Used Cars. What about Bob? A very funny comedy. Apparently these two hated working with each other, but... Or at least Richard Dreyfuss hated working with Bill Murray, but... Uh, it worked for the movie. <laughs> I don't know why I have this. I think it's one of those movies I got for 50 cents. Just like, okay, what's this movie about? And it's a piece of shit. Wow, what a surprise. What's the worst that could happen? You could watch this movie. I like Martin Lawrence and Andy Vio, but this is just a very lame, forgettable, nothing of a film. Wasn't that funny. Where the Buffalo Rome, sort of predecessor to Fear and Loathing Las Vegas, where... He, Bill Murray's playing Hunter S. Thompson, which Johnny Depp would play in that. Fun movie. I really enjoy this film. I think this is one of Bill Murray's most underrated movies, where the Buffalo Road. White Chicks. I wanted to check this out because I like Scary Movie 1 and 2, but I ended up not liking this film much at all. It just didn't do much for me. And Little Man is way worse. Why nice too? I have this because I think it's much better than the first movie. Nathan Filling did a good job. The ending was more satisfying compared to the first movie. And uh, I thought the story was kind of interesting. So yeah, I think this is a much better film than the, the first White Noise. <clears throat> Who from Roger Rabbit? It's a classic. This I got because... I rented this, and the commentary is a lot funnier than the movie. Who's your caddy? This movie is god-awful. And grant, the, the commentary, granted, they're proud of the movie, but it's still a very funny comedy, commentary. Because Faison loves on there, the, the guy on the right there. and He's pretty funny. A lot funnier than he is in the movie. Wall Hogs. I, I like the cast in this. I was entertained by this film. There was plans of a sequel, but it never came about. Willard, I actually saw this in the theater. I was one of the only people in the theater at the time, but I saw this in the theater and I liked it. I thought Crispin Glover was creepy, and I thought I had a lot of creepy moments with the rats. Willow, good fantasy film by Ron Howard. Wonderful musical score. One of Val Kilmer's best roles. Wishmaster 1 and 2, I know there's a pack with new special features, but it's a bit too expensive for me. When I only really liked the first one. The second one, not so much. I, I reviewed all the Wishmaster films on the channel, I just remembered that. But the first one's great, the sequel's not so much. They went down here real quick with that shit. Yeah. Sorry, folks. I just want to keep things a little bit neater. You know, wasting you guys' time. All three people that are going to be watching this morning this video. <coughs> um. Okay, so I have that left. Okay, do this. Sorry, folks. One second. If I don't do this, it'll just bug the hell out of me. And put that there. Put this here. Slide that in here. And 
slide down here. All right. <clears throat> Without a paddle, which I enjoyed for the cast. The movie itself isn't great, but I enjoy the cast in the movie. The wrestler, wonderful performance by Mickey Wark. Bit of a heartbreaking performance. The Wraith, it's there. It has some nice moments, but uh, it could have been improved. Like, to not kill every person the exact same way with the car. I, I wish there was a bit more creativity with that. My mom got this for me years and years and years ago because she knew I was an X-Files fan, but she didn't know how much I hated this fucking movie. X-Files, I want to believe this is a good movie, but it's not. I ranted on this piece of shit. Maybe one day I'll do a ranting commentary on a live stream ranting on this piece of shit. Because this is a piece of fucking shit. Oh. Someone was asking me about Extro. Extro has some fun effects, but it's a shitty movie. I actually think Extro 2 is a better better film, honestly. More competent film. More straightforward film, Extro 2. That's an alien ripoff, but it's more straightforward than Extro 1. Triple X, sadly the only good one of the franchise. I was really looking forward to the return of Xander Cage, but it disappointed the fuck out of me. Because I really liked this movie. But, Return of Xander Cage, Cage barely did anything in his own fucking movie. He didn't need a team. That's Fast and Furious, not Triple X. Your Highness, very underrated comedy. I don't understand the bad rap this film gets. I thought it was hilarious. I love that it took homage to the old 80's gory sword and sorcery movies that made that into a comedy. I thought that was a great idea. Apparently I'm alone in that. Sons of the Lambs, great movie. Zodiac, good stuff but way too long. Yeah, this was cheap, 50 cents, because I wanted to give another look. Sad to say in retrospect, this is probably better than the Return of Xander Cage. At least Ice Tube's Theater does shit in that movie. This film, it's not a good film, but I thought Yogi Bear and Boo Boo, they actually seem like they stuck to their characters. The plot and the uh, human characters who gives a fuck, but I thought these two actually kind of stuck to who they were originally, and I didn't see a lot of fart joke type of humor in the film. So it was there. I've seen much worse of those kind of movies. Young Frankenstein, one of Mel Brooks' best films. Real Genius, saw this the first time a few years ago, quite enjoyed it. Entertaining movie. <clears throat> this I got uh, mainly for The Freshman, which I was disappointed in, I was expecting a lot more. You also have Holy Moses, Vice Versa, and A Fine Mess. I haven't seen those other ones. Well, Vice Versa I saw, I didn't care for, but haven't seen the other two. <clears throat> Private Parts, entertaining comedy, I quite enjoy it. And last, got this for like 50 cents, House of the Dead. Saw this in the theater, yes, I saw this in the fucking movie theater. I wanted to see if it improved, it didn't. It's, it's, sometimes it's so insane, I'm like, what the fuck, but there you go, that's what's in the box, it took way longer than I thought it would, but either way, thanks for watching, take care, let me know if you want to see more of this, it'll be a while before I do another one again, because this took a lot out of me, but see you guys later, and have a good day, bye-bye.